that in York they've got that original 1934 drawing and it's of the complete engine and there's every single part on the engine drawn true to scale and I just think uh, the draftsmanship is magnificent it's not uh, evident from that drawing but rest assured it really is beautiful it shows you the main steam block the main cylinder block and steam chest so you've got one two outer cylinders and that's the centre one and then these one two three are the steam chest valves slide valves that control um, in the network this is the same thing but cut through sideways and all this is inclined uh, this part is inclined I think it I don't remember, 1 in 30 and then the centre cylinder is inclined slightly differently we imagine having to get all the dimensions exactly right so when you come to bolt these things together they fit I think it's dramatic draftsmanship. so that is the finished steam chest after it's cast and machined and that's showing I can't remember if the front or the back whatever it is and it's the other side I think the other was the front, this is the rear. So again, it's showing you the one, two, three, hmm. one, two, three main cylinders, and then you've got the inlet and outlet exhaust valves. And then the this is what the boiler sits on. <coughs> and if you think about the boiler, on a cold winter's day, with no fire in it, and then compare that same boiler to a hot summer's day with the fire fully developed. It's obvious that the boiler is going to extend. And the way locomotives are designed is the boiler is anchored at the front end of the engine, it's anchored onto those uh, steam chests, and the rest of the boiler down the engine is free to move. It's supported. Um, but it has to cater for that extension and everything else going through into the cab you can't fasten anything up tight it has to be an able allow it to move so let's go on a bit further well again they're not easy to go up these things but so Nigel Gresley one of the things he actually designed and got a patent for which is what it says here is what they call two to one valve gear. Now if you have three cylinders in the old days you had three sets of valve gear. But he designed a leverage system here that the outside pair of cylinders through this leverage provided a movement onto the centre cylinder such that each cylinder received its steam 120 degrees apart as it went around the circle. Again, and just another example of excellent draftsmanship. This is the main driving axle. So all these counterweights, they're not just there for fun, they're there actually to balance out the uh, eccentricity of the roads. If you put a stone in a piece of string and swing it around your head, it'll stay out there, it's centrifugal force. And the weight of all those cum rods as they're going up and down they have to be balanced out, otherwise it will break the locomotive to pieces. So this is part of the balancing system. And when you look at the wheels of the locomotive, you'll see another balancing weight on there. Now this, again, failed, but nevertheless, was the cause of, they say, some of the problems with the P2s. At the front of the engine, when they only truck wheels around a curve, the rest of the engine is cannot bend. So the boilers tried to go around this bend as well. So Dresley had what they call a swing link system here. So it's as it goes around the corner, first of all it can move, you see the angle of that. Well that one when it gets to the other side of the curve, this will come the other way. And in doing so it also lifts the weight of the front of the locomotive up slightly as it goes through that radius. So that has a self centering effect when it comes off the curve. Anyway, despite all that, they had problems in maintaining 
than Linux. So our locomotive is going to have side sprung control instead of swing link. And that's what they did on a class called V2s uh, to solve a similar problem. <coughs> so there is a, what we call a car taxi axle. Now, fancy name, and it's a fancy axle. If you look at it, it's not quite clear on here, but everything is at an angle to the frame. And you think, well, how's that going to work then? And when you go inside that thing, there may be another picture, let's just see. Aha, you see there's a wedge there. And in addition, you see the angle of this compared to the angle of this. The whole thing is the geometry that allows the last pair of wheels to rotate about the centre point about 12 feet away from the engine. So again, that helps the engine to ground curves, but it's a very complicated mechanism. Ah, well, that's just to show you, this is a tornado uh, braking system. Uh, we've got to go through a similar process, but it's a line diagram of everything that has to interlock with each other to make it safe to run on network rail. So there's the cab in 1934. Across the top here is what we call a manifold. Basically, it's just a piece of bike with lots of other little bikes going off it. It's like a spreader, if you like, and that feeds the steam out to everything that you're interested in, pressures, etc. And of course, two main things are these feed glasses. You must look at the level of the water in the boiler. If you allow the water to come down, the top of the boiler will become uncovered and it will buckle and that's the end of your engine. So it's critical to keep the water levels under control. This is back to uh, Wednesfield. They're the front part of our frames. And here's the, the plasma, twin plasma heads, cutting two mainframe plates at the same time. And I've only got um, a couple of pictures here. But basically, there's then two men there, and there's nobody else in the factory, as far as we can see. It's quite remarkable. Now, that's what they call a strong back. And these yellow things here, one, two, three, four, they're yeah, magnetic uh, clamps. And they're going to come down over the plate, which is now profiled, switch the electric current on, and it'll clamp them, and they're going to drop it on the floor down here, hopefully. Let's see. Aha, so they've now dropped it on the floor. And there's a happy crowd to see. There's Mr. Brian Blessed. Any questions? On that last, uh, that last slide of the of the frame, it looked to me as though one of the cutouts for a wheel bearing wasn't cut out. Is it possible to go back? It is. <laughs> I mean, my mate, can can you see what I, I, I'm assuming? I'm assuming that these these are these are for the for they're the main the axle mounts. Should there not be one? No, no. There's one there. There's one there. Look. And there's another one down here, oh, along it's, the oh, places. Oh, it's here, is it? Okay, okay. That's yeah, that's yeah. Okay, that's but that's you're not the only one to give me a fright, because one of this party here, Peter Smith, he rang me up a couple of days after <coughs> this event and said, did I realise that the plates weren't right? I said, good laws, why is that? And he said, well, you know, um, we've got this front plate wrong. And he didn't know that each side of the P2 engine is four different pieces of plate and he's only used to seeing one piece so right. he was a bit confused about that. Okay, I'm sure you've got it right. Right, so lady and gentlemen, uh, short presentation, I hope it's of interest. Any questions? The uh, frames, are they press steel or uh, is it uh, cast? Well it's steel plate. Yeah, it's Grade steel three, five, it's five. steel it's grade 355 miles steel. Well, it's a higher grade of miles steel. 
course, the uh, was the advantage you took with cast steel? Well, you don't use cast steel for a start, uh, for this type of thing. It's always mild steel because it has to flex. Cast steel is getting towards the brittle end of the metallurgy market. Yeah. But I thought for the um, frames and the wheels, things like that. It was no, the wheels, the wheels would be cast, but you don't cast frames. So it is the grade 355 steel, which in old money is what I call grade 50. Excellent. Oh, I didn't see you, Mr. Taylor. Sorry. Excellent. I think we should, we should give Malcolm a round of applause. Can we, can, can we give him a quick round of applause, everybody? Thank you very much.